In this video, we will be covering how to form the nation of New Providence in EU4, a haven for lawlessness, tax evasion, and perfidious privateers. The Bahamas are an incredibly fun and interesting nation to play as, given that they are one of four unique formable pirate republics in the in-game campaign. My name is AlzboHD, and if you're interested in pillaging and plundering Spanish booty, you've come to the right place. In the following guide, we will set sail and embark on a step-by-step -step guide to ensure success on your pirate endeavors and ultimately obtain the pirate life's achievement, if y'are so inclined. When you're ready to scour the seven seas, go ahead and grab a flask of ale and stale bread. It's time to hoist the black flag and begin our guide. Before starting your campaign, it's interesting to note that all four pirate republics, New Providence included, do not have a required culture or religion, and can thus be formed by any nation in the game. Of course, with that being said, nations that are closer to the Caribbean at the campaign start, such as the Iberian nations of Portugal, Castile, Aragon, and Cordoba, are at an advantage in that they can form the pirate republics faster and more easily than anyone else. For the purposes of this guide, though, I will be starting as England, as New Providence and the Bahamas were historically English during their period of piracy, but you can play as any nation that you like. Forming the Pirate Republics as England also offers you the unique opportunity to switch to American culture upon your independence, but your choice of starting nation is entirely aesthetic, and will not impact your campaign in any way, outside of starting difficulty. With that being said, I do recommend starting as a European nation as this will allow you to reach the Caribbean easily and usually within the first 50 years of the in-game start. Let's get started with our guide. If you are playing as an Iberian nation, whether it be Portugal, Spain, Cordoba, or even Aragon, congratulations! You have your work cut out for you and the preparation step will be far easier for you than any other nation. All you have to do is survive and stay ahead of technology until unlocking your first idea group at admin sec level 5. For all other nations, including our example of England, we need to eat up a bit of Iberia in order to have the colonial range needed to explore and settle the Caribbean. Assuming you are playing England as I am, you benefit from your continental French holdings, which will allow you to fabricate claims on both Castile and Navarra for a fast war of conquest. To that end, it's time for us to prepare for war. Looking southwards, I highly recommend restarting your campaign until Castile and Aragon are rivals, which happens more often than not. Once this is the case, probably set Castile as your own rival, and set up an alliance with Aragon. In the best case situation, Navarra will be allied to Castile and Castile alone, as seen in this example, which will ultimately allow you an easy war, as their ally Portugal will not be involved as a co-belligerent. No matter the situation, go ahead and fabricate claims on either Navarra or Castile, and declare war while calling in Aragon as your ally with promises of territory. This war will be very easy, as your combined forces will heavily outnumber those of the Castilian army, but you should be mindful of two events that are likely to appear while you are at war. The first and most likely event is that France will demand the surrender of Maine. When it happens, simply give France their province via event, which will give you a long truce timer with them and buy you some time. The second event is the War of Roses disaster, which can also be safely ignored as the spawning rebels will install a new and better king for you while also giving you plus one stability. Remember, we do not care about England or our French territories, as we will abandon them once we form our pirate republic, so any loss of territory or rebel insurrection can be ignored. With that out of the way, continue your conquest of Iberia until you can demand the northwestern region of Galicia in a peace treaty. With an Iberian province or two, you will more than likely have the colonial range needed to island hop to the Americas. But if you want to play it safe, you can always go to war with Portugal or Castile after your truce, and take the Canary and Azores Islands. Now that you have at least one Iberian province, and maybe even one or two islands off of the coast of Africa, it is time to move ahead to the next part of our guide. With our new Iberian holdings in place, it is time we set our sights on exploring the new world. Go ahead and fast forward until you have enough monarch power to unlock administrative technology level 5. Once unlocked, it allows us to select our first idea group, and we will choose exploration. As soon as you unlock this idea group, spend 400 diplomatic monarch power and invest in its first idea. Next, hire an explorer for your fleet, which should contain at least 3 light or heavy ships, 
and order them to discover all regions currently available to you. By this time, it is unlikely that you will have the colonial range to discover the Caribbean, and if this is the case for you, do not worry. You will soon be able to reach the New World, and I highly recommend saving your diplomatic monarch power up so that you can invest in the first three exploration ideas. This is because the third exploration idea offers you a massive plus 50% colonial range modifier, and taken in conjunction with the Navigator Advisor, will allow you to reach the Americas. If you have not taken Spain or Portugal's islands off of the coast of Iberia or Africa, you can colonize the province of Tenerife while you wait, which lies immediately adjacent to Spain's Canary Island province. Once settled, this island will give you further colonial range and will prove useful for the next section in our guide. Regardless, once you have taken the third exploration idea, go ahead and hire a Navigator Advisor, if one is available. If you do not see one for hire, simply fire a level 1 advisor every month in the Diplomatic Advisor Selection Pool, which will slowly alternate all available advisors, and will eventually allow you to select one and benefit from their plus 20% Colonial Range modifier. Once you have the Colonial Range, and are able to explore the Caribbean region, it is time to move on to the next section of our guide. Now that your explorers have uncovered the Caribbean region and have set their sights on the West Indies, it is time for us to send out our colonists to settle the islands. In order to form one of the three pirate republics, you must colonize either the Bahamas, Tortuga, or Jamaica. For the purposes of this guide, and to obtain the Pirate Life's Iron Man achievement, we will be colonizing the Bahamas in order to form the nation of New Providence. If you do not care about achievements, you can instead choose to colonize Tortuga to form the nation of Tortuga, or you can colonize Jamaica to form the nation of Port Royal. It should be mentioned, though, that forming Tortuga requires the province to be Protestant, and since the Protestant Reformation has likely not occurred yet, will require you to wait if you desire to play as them. Each pirate nation comes with their own unique flag, but all three of them share the same mission tree and have no real differences outside of map color and personal preference. As mentioned earlier, we will form new providence in this guide, and thus must colonize our way to the Bahamas in order to proceed. You have two options at this point on how to go about laying the foundations for your pirate republic. You can, as I've chosen in this guide, opt to island hop westwards and colonize the Bahamas immediately, in order to form your pirate nation more quickly. Alternatively, you can colonize more islands of the Caribbean before hoisting the black flag, which will ultimately allow you easier access to expansion after forming your pirate republic. Since you are going to change your nation anyways, you don't need to worry about your country's ducats or debt, and you can send out multiple colonists to expand your future territory if you decide to take this alternative path. Regardless, once you are able to send a colonist to the Bahamas, or Tortuga and Jamaica if you decide to form those instead, it is time for us to move on to the next section of our guide. After sending our colonists to the Bahamas, it is time for us to prepare laying the framework for our new nation. In reality, this is a fancy way of saying that you should save up your monarch power while also staying up to date with administrative, diplomatic, and military technology levels. This is because our soon-to-be-born Pirate Republic will inherit the same technology level as our founding nation, and you really do not want to handicap yourself by setting yourself up for failure. I highly recommend also saving your excess mana and reserve, as once you colonize the Bahamas and before you form New Providence, you can use your leftover mana to heavily develop your island capital. To that end, ignore investing in any other idea group, exploit your estates by demanding monarch power, and hire advisors to speed up your mana generation. Don't worry if advisors send your nation to debt, as we will be switching sides soon and could care less about the financial mismanagement of our mother country. Regardless, once the Bahamas or your pirate province of choice is colonized, dump all of your spare points into developing it. At this point, you can either skip ahead and form your pirate republic immediately, or you can choose to wait and develop your future capital's province even more extensively. Regardless of your decision, once your technology is up to date and YAR ready to form your pirate republic of choice, it is time for us to move on to the next section of our guide. Shiver me timbers! Now that your nation of choice has colonized the Bahamas, YAR, are you ready to hoist the black flag and obtain your letters of mark? If so, forming New Providence and the other pirate republics is incredibly easy. When your body is ready for scurvy and syphilis, all you need to do now is order a fleet of several light ships to pirate the Caribbean trade node. In around three months, an event called the Golden Age of Piracy will appear, 
assuming you've been able to have your privateers possess 25% trade power in the Caribbean trade node. And if you've been following this guide this far, you will be the only nation, civilized or otherwise, in the region, guaranteeing you that it will appear relatively quickly. Following the appearance of this event, continue pirating the Caribbean. After about 12 more months of pirating indigenous fishermen, an event will appear that will allow you to finally release and play as your Pirate Republic of choice. For the purposes of this guide, the Pirate Republic event will appear, which will enable you to finally engage in egalitarian democracy and establish a new providence as your Pirate Republic. No matter which nation you've decided to play as, all of them can be formed in this method, assuming you've colonized their respective provinces and, in the case of Tortuga, have adopted Protestantism as your state religion. Once formed, your new nation is in a favorable position, as you start off with at least one idea group fully unlocked, depending on how long you wait. If you chose to form the nation quickly, as in this example, you are also more than likely the first and only Western nation in the New World and Western Hemisphere. Consequently, you have more than enough time to consolidate your position, and it is time for us to move on to the final part of our guide. With our newly founded Pirate Republic in place, let's take a minute to explain the interesting mechanics that are available to our unique government form. No matter which nation you have formed, all Pirate Republics benefit from a plus 50% naval force limit modifier, a further plus 33% chance to capture enemy ships, and the ability to raid coasts for ducats and sailors, including even nations of your own religion. Furthermore, we will now have access to an entirely new and redesigned mission tree that focuses particularly on naval warfare and provides you numerous claims and cores across the Caribbean and New World. Last and certainly not least, our second national idea allows us to ignore religion completely, as all heretic and heathen provinces no longer count against religious unity and produce zero unrest in our nation. With the basics out of the way, it is now time for us to turn our attention to our immediate surroundings. In order to obtain the Yar Har, a pirate's life for me achievement, we must conquer and control all of the Caribbean. To this end, I highly recommend choosing expansion or exploration ideas, especially if you rush forming your Pirate Republic early on and you find the region empty of colonial nations. Optionally, you can also opt to conquer the region instead, as your first mission tier grants you claims across all of the Caribbean once you build a level 2 fort in your capital. Fortune favors the bold. And, luckily for your Buccaneers and Pirate Republic, opting for this more violent solution is far easier than you might expect. This is because you can declare wars on colonial nations without the European powers joining the conflict, and preventing them from defending their subjects. Unfortunately for our pirates, however, waiting around for colonial nations to form and conquer is very boring, and if you don't want to fiddle your hard tack while waiting, you can always subjugate the local populations before the Europeans inevitably settle in the Caribbean. In this guide, I chose to fabricate claims on Mexico and conquer it while I waited for nations to expand into, and I recommend this path as it will provide you provinces that produce gold and the funds necessary for maintaining huge naval fleets. As you start to expand and conquer your way around the Caribbean, I highly recommend investing into the infamous and hilariously terrible naval ideas. As mentioned last week in the Military Idea Guide, these ideas are awful for almost every nation in the game, but since you're a pirate, your main form of attack will be through your navy, and given naval's focus on boosting the effectiveness and power of your ships, it is a natural choice for your campaign. Unlike with most nations, your Pirate Republic can effectively stand toe-to-toe -to -toe against even the largest nations in the game, as you can use your fleets to sink any ship and the unfortunate armies aboard them who intend on invading your home islands. To this end, do not be afraid to declare war against England, France, or even Spain to get the provinces that you need, and, since you get a natural bonus to capturing ships, your fleet will become so gigantic that you'll have to disband ships from time to time to ensure that you do not plummet yourself into bankruptcy. After taking all of the Caribbean, which includes the further afield island of Bermuda to the north, your position as the undisputed American power will be cemented, and you will obtain the Pirate Life's achievement. From here on out, the sky really is the limit, and you can continue conquering and pirating booty to all of your heart's content. If you do decide to conquer the world as your Pirate Republic, however, who and what will you be able to pirate in the future? We've reached the end of the video, and I'd like to thank everyone for watching. 
A special shout out goes to my patrons on Patreon that support the channel and enable me to produce quality content on a regular basis. What EU4 videos would you like to see in the future? Let me know in the comment box below. If you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate a like or a comment as these will really help the channel grow. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.